In this video, I'm going to give you all you need to start with watercolor. And it's going to be a simplified version of it. I'm not going to give you more than you need. It's something I learned for more productivity to be extremely minimal. I only have this palette that I use every day. It's a plastic palette. It's very easy to carry and I can fit all of my brushes into. And also for paint, I only use 12. So you don't have to use more than 12. If you're just starting out, it's better to get better at mixing colors by limiting your color palette. For brushes, you only need three sizes of round brushes. One for finer details, five for filling small spaces, and 10 is for covering bigger surfaces. And it's really essential to get a brush that has a soft hair so that it can hold water much more and it's also better to get a synthetic brush in my opinion so you don't need more than that don't overwhelm yourself by your pile of art materials i have to mention that i made some mistakes buying some brushes that are a complete waste of time and money i even bought a weird looking brush i mean look at it is that even a brush seriously though is that a brush Anyways, for paper, I personally buy a big piece of paper and custom cut it into my preferred size. I cut some smaller and some bigger and use them for different paintings. So with paper, there are three factors that you need to pay attention to. Uh, one is the weight of it, GSM, which for beginners, I recommend that you get the GSM of somewhere around 250. Second is the cotton percentage. The more cotton it has, the better. But if you're only starting out, there's no need for you to get 100% cotton and put yourself in debt. Seriously, buy something cheap to practice first. Watercolor paper also has three categories, hot press, cold press, rough press. No, there's no press here, just rough. I would say for beginners, you can use either hot press or cold press. Hot press has no texture, so it's kind of similar to regular paper. Therefore, it's easier to work with. Cold press is my favorite because it has a bit of texture showing up in my painting, which is cool. And I'm kind of scared of rough. So yeah, it's rough, man. Let's just leave that one alone. If you want to cover the whole surface of the paper, it's better to use the masking tape. It helps the paper to hold its shape after getting soaked with water. So basically, you're stretching out the paper by using the tape. And buy some good quality ones, because if the tape is not strong enough, the color is going to leak through it. For sketching, you need to use a pencil that doesn't smudge. If you use graphite, it might make some messy smudges when you are adding colors to it. I personally use a red pencil and it works wonder. For erasing, be careful to use a soft eraser so that you don't damage the texture of the paper. And if you damage it, you can see the effect of it when you're adding color to it because it's going to look so bad. For sketching, squint your eyes and look at the reference. You get the overall geometric shape of the figure to know where it starts and where it ends. At this stage, you're basically outlining the entire painting and then you determine the proportions of each and every part of the figure. And slowly, you can build your way up to the finer details and also you don't have to get it all at once. You can leave some details out to add with colors later. Or you could also simply skip all these parts and directly use watercolor to do all these sketchings and coloring. But that is is for extreme professionals and i am not one of them but maybe a few years from now we'll see so sketching is done it's time to erase a little and the reason is that you don't want those squiggly lines showing up after the painting is finished when adding watercolor you have to start with the first draft like the sketch that we outlined at first it's really an identical process you must apply the base color and then go on to the details but always keep in mind to start from the lighter tones and then when you go more in details you start to add darker and stronger colors to it. So be patient with it because in the beginning you are basically seeing no results. After the first layer is done, it's time that you go more toward adding the shadings. And before doing any shadings, determine which way the light is hitting the object and try to maintain that direction throughout the entire process. Also, don't overwork the paper, just be delicate with it. And the technique I am using here is wet on dry, which is the simplest technique and there are other techniques such as wet on wet, dry on wet, and dry on dry. I don't know if that exists, but there are so many other techniques that I don't personally use. And I am 100% certain that you will only need the wet on dry for most of your paintings. But for bigger pieces, like let's say 
painting a landscape you might need to use the wet on wet for painting the sky to give you a cohesive look but if you're a beginner don't worry about any of it just use the wet on dry technique and when you get the hang of it you will be able to pick up other techniques as well so now that we are done with the coloring it's time for the most rewarding part the line art when everything comes together for doing line art keep in mind to always use the right amount of water because if you use more water than needed the lines are going to be larger and it will mess up the entire painting the less water you add onto your paint the thinner the lines are going to be and if you think that your lines are not dark enough, you can simply go over it again and make them darker. And as you can see, I am adding more black to some part of the painting that needs stronger shading. At this point, you can get so creative and based on your taste, you can add more contrast to it. For highlights, I am using Posca markers, but you can also use any opaque markers or white gouache. And that is it. I think I have covered all the questions and problems with watercolor, but if you you have any other questions just drop it in the comment section below and i will make an updated tutorial to answer all of your questions so subscribe for more art tutorials and i will hopefully see you in the next episode have a nice week